I'm Jerry Nolan, and like a lot of you out there, I spend a good bit of my time on someone else's clock and under a deadline. But when my weekend gets here, I'm on my own clock, and sometimes I just have to get away. So follow me, and I'll show you some far out places to go, some cool things to do that won't necessarily break the bank. So what are you waiting for? Put down that honeydew list and catch me if you can. On today's show, we're going to scratch around for some bottles, pick through a couple of old barns, cook some ribs and rice, and talk fishing with some of the finest folks you could ever meet. Hey y'all, look who I got with me. The one and only madman, rockin', rollin', strollin' Nolan, and also hanging out with us today is Uncle Jesse. We travel to Sparks, Georgia, where we hook up with Walt Ahrens, co-founder of the Southern Bass Busters Fishing Club. This is one of the oldest fishing clubs around, started in the 80s by a group of fishing buddies. I'm told that the reason the club has stayed together this long is because of their number one rule. We have no fussing. If we have any kind of fussing, we, 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 we stop it. Uh, we all just come and fish, have fun, fellowship, and that's the way we love it. Yeah. Uh, and we, don't, we do not go any farther than around 50 to 60 mile radius. Because we, you know, we, we don't go to big lakes. Yeah. Banks is probably the biggest lake we go to. So most of our, our club members has got little John boats and chinoos and... How do you get into this club? Uh, you pay $25 a person uh -huh. and then uh, you're in. And then at the end of the year, we have a big cookout here. Yeah. And we invite everybody and then we have your daddy. 90% of the time comes, a celebrity. And I hope you come next time. Hey, I'll, that would I'll be, be great. Here. I mean, and we have a good time. Sit out there, take pictures, cook out and eat. But we have a good time. Having a good time is just part of being in this club. Southern Bass Busters is a club that's uh, formed on the basis of conserving uh, the bass population. Uh, we go out, we have a good time. We got some good folks in the club, real good folks. But uh, we practice catch and release, which is preferable for anybody out there that uh, wants to catch bass and wants their kids to catch bass in the future is to conserve the uh, bass population and we're big on that. Our main club rules is uh, at any of the tournaments all the bass go back into the lake. Um, everyone has live wells so we're real conscious about conserving the bass population. <music> Strange, cool, fascinating, but one word that will never, ever, ever be used to describe the Southern Bass Busters Clubhouse is boring. Collections of autographs fill the wall of fame in the fishing museum. Local artifacts and oddities that will make you take a second look fill up the dining hall. You look around, you got signs, you got a little bit of everything. Yes, I do. I mean, where does this stuff come from? I know you find a lot of stuff. You're a collector. We're a hoarder. <laughs> well, yeah. We'll call it collecting. How about that? That's, a, that's an easier way to put the term. Right. Um, yeah. people, people come by and say, well, do you want this? I say, I'll take it. And a lot of times I, you know, I keep everything I, I get. And it sort of scares me. It scares my wife. So she says, uh, don't bring no more home. That's right. But, so. Well, you, when you look around in here, it's just neat. Everywhere you look in the little, little corners, little cracks, you're going to see something neat. It just makes you stop and think for a second. Yeah, it does, Jerry. I, I, I tell you what, really, yeah, I love so good when Tom come. He said, this is, he said, this is, it's like heaven. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I says, and it, it made me feel good because Tom, man, if he, if he says it looks good, I reckon it does. Yeah. See, I mean, I'm, I'm here every day, so I don't, I don't... Right, yeah, yeah, you you kind of forget the, I guess, the uh, uh, yeah. the appeal to it, the magic that right. other people see when right. they come here for the first time, right. like we right. have today. Right, right, right. Um, and, uh, but it really is something else. Well, I'm, I'm going to go home and start building me a little clubhouse. <laughs> like this, Next to the dining hall is where you'll find Walt's office and bottle room. Walt, I noticed you got a nice collection of bottles in here and a little bit of everything, haven't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. That's what I was telling uh, my nephew. I was telling Junior, once it gets in your blood, digging it, always hey. hard to get it out. I've been doing it for years. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, and it uh, takes the stress off of you, and it's a good family thing. You get the kids into it, yes, the wife, sir. everybody. 
But I know you got some nice Coke bottles, uh, poison bottles. You got a little bit of all of it in here, so I can tell you've done a lot of hunting. <laughs> well, yeah, sir, and I got a lot boxed up like you do. I got. Yeah. I don't right. have them all on a uh, display. I wish I could, yeah. but it'd take three rooms like this. I like your can collection. Yeah, all that right. you got up here is pretty nice. There, I've seen some of them. I have. Uh, well, I might have thrown out a couple of them myself around here, but uh, I see the old fall staff. Yes, sir. Slits. Yes, sir. Old bush cans. There's one there. If you can get somebody to drink one of them, you'd be out. <laughs> That's a shape. We used to put them in a cooler before the people come around didn't have beer, and they we give them them. And uh, a week later, still had beer floating around in the cooler. But. <laughs> That's but the kind it, of people drink, but they want they want to bum. Yeah, but it's a lot of fun to find something and, and still got good paint on them yeah, and stuff sir. like that. There's some bad ones, but got these uh, gillies. I bought them from a guy at flea market. Them, I, I yeah. like them gillies. No sterling big mouth bottles. Yes, sir. We, I, you I had one. one. You had yeah. one. I done. It didn't have the label, but it. No, but I knew what it was because right. it fit my hand just right. And I remember how you used to guzzle them down out of that big mouth. That's yes. when they call them the big, big mouth, mouth sterling big yes, sir. mouth. That's right. But I know you yeah. got a lot of Coca-Cola collectors out here, and uh, you can't hardly get enough of that stuff. People want all your Coca-Cola stuff, and I know you had some real nice Pepsi bottles over there, and uh, I seen a straight-sided Coke bottle had the smallest Coca-Cola embossment on there, and then you got painted on bottles, and the better the paint is, the better the bottle is to collect. Right. So, Some of them don't want it. If you got one word gone yes, off sir. of it, they don't yes, want it. You know, yeah. Well, Walt's got a good collection of uh, straight-sided bottles here. And I notice this Coca-Cola bottle here, if you see Coca-Cola, that's one of the smallest prints I've seen on one of those like that. If you notice Coca-Cola on these other ones, it's uh, yes, a lot sir. bigger. A see bigger. How, see yep. how big it is? Sure is. That's one of the smallest ones I've seen. And I think that's from way across Georgia. So your way across Georgia bottles, there's one from Ocala, Florida, I believe, but that's some nice straight side bottles. They go back in the 1800, about 1890s and stuff. And they started making these hobble skirts in 1915. That's when they first come out with these in 1915. They made these up till 1915, the straight sides. Straight side. And then they come up with the hobble skirt. Some of them people call them umbrella bottles, uh, but them pretty neat bottles. All of them, uh, you see the different colors, purple looking. Green, blue. Jesse, what is this? I, <laughs> look at that little bitty neck. Yeah, that was probably a hair tonic because they'd use a little, little bit in weird. And, you know, they just cut that a little bit on top of your head. That, yeah, we always use Vitalis. See, yep. I don't yep. use much now. <laughs> that's it right there. You talking about? Yeah, that little 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 little, I can't, yeah, I can't clean it out because it, it's too little a hole. Yeah, that's what that is. Hair tonic. Yep. Hey y'all, don't go anywhere because when we come back, we're going to scratch for some bottles and pick through a couple of old barns Walt has here on his property. Attention do-it-yourselfers, buy direct and save. Smithbilt and Sasser lets you cut out the middleman and buy metal roofing and siding direct from the manufacturer. No job too big, too small. For all your metal roofing needs, call Smithbilt, 698-5000. Todd's Lawn Care specializes in tree removal and trimming. They do it all. No job is too big or too small. Stump grinding, backhoeing, bush hogging, Todd's Lawn Care has the tools and experience. Licensed and insured for your protection. For a professional job from the ground up, call Todd's Lawn Care. Hey, Southwest Georgia, it's Billy with Carpet World. Did you know DuPont has created a new carpet fiber for Mohawk carpets? It's the greenest carpet fiber on earth and is made from 60% corn. That's right, corn. It also has the industry's best warranty with lifetime stain warranty and 20-year wear warranty. It can't be beat. So call Carpet World at 229-432-7916 or come by today and ask about the new Mohawk Smart Strand Carpets. Carpet World, 911 West Oglethorpe, Albany. Even a minor storm can cause damage to your roof, such as missing shingles from wind or hail damage. So call s, &S Roofing today for a free inspection before a small problem becomes a big problem. And remember, Southwest Georgia, we've got you covered. The spin zone is open at 80 Outfitters, and that's the good thing. We'll hook you up with tackle for fresh and salt water. Hundreds of rod and reels, Yeti coolers, and coasters. Fishing and outdoor wear by Guy Harvey. Under Armour, Columbia, AFCO, and more. New and used handguns by the thousands. We're going overboard for fishing at 80 Outfitters. It will kayaks and canoes in stock. Hey, big wave! Come see me, chat. I'm the well one. <laughs> 
So after a short visit at the clubhouse, we head over to pick through an old barn that's now used to store some of Walt's collectibles. It's all a bunch, but I got more, but this, I found these the other day. I don't know, they ain't plenty, ain't worth nothing to them. Number one, see right, right here, uh, Walt, on the bottom you got a number 10 on there. Number one on that, but uh, back when the moonshiner was moonshining, 13, you they take the 13s and bust them because it's bad luck. I mean, you know, they're superstitious. So if they had a number 13 on it, they'd bust them. So when you find one with a 13, 13 they're that's... rare and worth more money. Well, but them, I, I, them are pretty. See that pretty blue? I'm going to remember that. Yeah, they call that Eiffel Blue. Yeah. And them some nice jars there, Eiffel Blue. Jeez. And, uh, and uh, certain mason jar, ball mason, they have different names on them and depends on the name and all that, the, the rarity of them. And they got one called a, uh, uh, what I say is a Louis Van Lafayette. It says Lafayette on there, pretty expensive. But uh, that's some nice mason jars. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. He'll put some pickles in there if you want to. <laughs> I know it. Hey. Let, me, let, me, let me show you this thing over here. My granddaddy invented these, y'all. What it is, it shells peas. And this is a pea sheller, and that is a peanut sheller. What it does, you pour them in the top, and it, it grind it and brings them out, and, they, and it separates them and everything. And he he invented that. Find a new saw blade. Yeah, yeah, man. Like Boys, oh, American wow. pickers eat your heart out. I find a Walt, Walt said he used to <laughs> bounce in these when he was young in there. No, that's a, uh, you don't see that every day. No, you don't. No. Put them on, walk in, make you a little taller, and add a little spring to your step. That's good out there if he's out there dancing. There. <laughs> that was a kid's toy. Yes, they kids. Could, Yeah, bouncing up and down, I think I saw something that like that. something. Now, that's rare. That's kind of unusual. You don't see them every day. Old milk. I'll hush up my mug if you fill up my jug with some good old Mountain Dew. Look at that right there now. That was a baby bottle for a moonshine. <laughs> That's what that was. We got this solved. That's what it was. What is that? It is a postcard I found in here. And he's, oh, 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 oh no! Let me, uh, let me show you all this breaking, man. There's so much stuff in here breaking, man. It's worth millions of dollars. So you this got a was, postcard. Yeah, this was 1960 from Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, Mr. Red. Pelham, no, it was P A R M. Parham. Parham. Par 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 P A R H A R A M. -a. But, anyway, there's a dang old three cent stamp on there. The stamp's worth. All you got to do is email Phone. Jerry Nolan, get in the way, and you can have this too. <laughs> Look at this. What's it say on the other side? The other side, I can you read that good. Look at here, y'all. This is a, it, was, it was a contest. It was a contest, and I found all these old. They, oh, the, okay, there's his name right there, Mr. Okay. Red Parkham. Parkham. Yeah, the fi this was for a uh, contest. A contest winning for, and this was for TV ten years ago. Jerry, you can go back and get your rays off all that. this. So it just it tells you they want to know how big the fish was. That'd be darn. I didn't bring my. Well, that's glasses. something else right there. High red, I believe the fish. You had on the Thursday night program weighs two pounds and six and a half ounces. Sincerely yours, Ty Ty Georgia. I can't spell the name. Spud Bird. <laughs> Spud probably gone. Ty Ty Georgia, August 18, 1960. So what we have is a pile of postcards for people sent into a contest for the Red Red Parkham Red. Parkham show and he would show a fish on TV and the folks would have to, to guess the weight I wonder what they won one of the fun things about picking like this is when you find things you have no idea what it is well, what it could the, be a cracker what, you know you put no, something in a cracker it, no it was a sound effect for movies people did People clapping their hands or stuff, <laughs> or somebody driving nails. I put your fingers in there, and then it was the sound of people screaming and hollering. I, I'd tell you what this is. Back when they used to string yarn, this went in the loom, and it, what it did was when the yarn would come down through there, it was separated out there. Separated out. Yeah. 
Well, you knew more about it than them two old timers behind us. Well, <laughs> the thing about it is, I don't think he's accurate. What is it, Walt? I don't know, really. Walt, what you got in your hand? Hey, there? Somebody, a, you said it's an uh, attitude, attitude of judgment. Somebody yeah. knows what this is. <laughs> Won't you look at the screen there and look at the email on the screen there and email Jerry and let him know what you think it is? What is yeah. that? It's homemade. Well, he just told Junior told you what it was. He well, it. this was old window frames. <laughs> this is, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, old. it was old slotted wood floors is what it was at one time, but then they made something out of it. Tongue and groove. Yeah. Tongue. Yeah. 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 No, tongue, yeah put your tongue, tongue in there, groove it all right. But anyway, hey, <laughs> tell them right, Jerry. They That's right. The email right there on the screen. Email I'm going to let Jerry take that home with him, and then when he finds out. They can win it. Yeah. <laughs> they can win it. <laughs> you win that <laughs> Walt, how about that trying, that, uh, try that attitude adjustment stick oh. out, see if it works? Wait, uh, on who? <laughs> Strolling. Oh. It's going to be like that. <laughs> That's messing up a perfectly good stick like that. After digging through the old barn, we head to Walt's distribution warehouse. You see, Walt's not only a collector, but he also sells the little collectible novelty items that you see in the little convenience stores and truck stops. Now, Walt brought us over here because he wanted to show Jesse this old pie ante. We'll be digging for bottles and cooking ribs and rice. Todd's Lawn Care specializes in tree removal and trimming. They do it all. No job is too big or too small. Stump grinding, back hoeing, bush hogging, Todd's Lawn Care has the tools and experience. Licensed and insured for your protection. For a professional job from the ground up, call Todd's Lawn Care. Hey, Southwest Georgia, it's Billy with Carpet World. Did you know DuPont has created a new carpet fiber for Mohawk carpets? It's the greenest carpet fiber on earth and is made from 60% corn. That's right, corn. It also has the industry's best warranty with lifetime stain warranty and 20-year wear warranty. It can't be beat. So call Carpet World at 229-432-7916 or come by today and ask about the new Mohawk Smart Strand carpets. Carpet World, 911 West Oglethorpe, Albany. Supplying products that build dreams, short and park. Here at Short and Park, we're South Georgia's millwork specialists. Whether it's new construction or replacement windows from Plygym, doors from our custom shop, or specialty molding, we have all the products to turn an ordinary house into a home. For more information on innovative products for your home, Stop by any of our four locations or visit us online at shortpog.com. We're not just a hardware store, and we're a whole lot more than an ordinary lumber yard. Attention, do-it-yourselfers. Buy direct and save. Smithbilt and Sasser lets you cut out the middleman and buy metal roofing and siding direct from the manufacturer. No job too big, too small. For all your metal roofing needs, call Smithbilt, 698-5000. The spin zone is open at 80 Outfitters, and that's the good thing. We'll hook you up with tackle for fresh and salt water. Hundreds of rod and reels, Yeti coolers, and coasters. Fishing and outdoor wear by Guy Harvey. Under Armour, Columbia, AFCO, and more. New and used handguns by the thousands. We're going overboard for fishing at 80 Outfitters, even with kayaks and canoes in stock. Hey, big wave! Go see me, Jack. I do well. <laughs> I dig, 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 digging around. Dig, 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 digging the ground. I got my spade, I got my hoe, I got my rake, and I'm ready to go. Dig, After digging through those old barns, we head to a nearby bottle hole. I got my spade, I got my hoe, I got my rake, and I'm ready to go. So we're basically kind of in a swamp bottom almost, that's what it. We just walked through a swamp bottom. The ground is a little higher here, and uh, my guess is because it's uh, a pile of trash here. Is that what this is, Jesse, you think? Yes, yeah, just a, well, it's a dump site, but I had to have a road come down through here somehow or another because we're out in the middle of the swamp. But yes, yeah, old dump site, and uh, 
deeper you go, you find some of the older stuff, or the further back you go, you find the older stuff. But we just, uh, first time we've been in here, and uh, look like a good dig site here. Uh, get digging up a few of these bottles, see what we find here. I see everything, food bottles, medicine bottles, whiskey bottles, so there's a little bit of all of it in here. When you uh, out here, sometimes you gotta dig, and you might stay here and dig for an hour, 30 minutes, and then you just move a little bit farther, and you and, and, and like Uncle said, you'll find some good stuff here, you won't over here. Jesse's been over here digging in a digging a little bit and found us a... I'm thinking it might be a hair tonic bottle too. I, I believe it's got a small hole in it, but it's called Wild Root. And uh, they use this a lot of time in your barber shops, you know. Uh, now they don't use much stuff like that, but back in the 40s and 50s and all, even, you know, early 1900s, they, when you went in and got a haircut and shaved, they'd use this as aftershave and hair tonic, but that's called Wild Root. So, uh, like I say, you never know what you're going to find out. Look at what a bottle there. Big old medicine Look at bottle. That big giant <laughs> bottle right there, y'all. Yeah, big old brown. Yeah, Walt just dug that up over there by hand. Got a way. screw. Yeah. It's a plastic cap, so. It's not real, it's real old. It's not real, real old, but just the oddity of the bottle. You, well, they didn't make screw on caps till uh, 1924 or something, screw on caps. But that door glass, that's back in the 40s because they went out of business. But right, right there, the 50s. If, if you can see, I can't see it. Yeah. Huh? See it? It's got something. Yeah, door glass. Okay. That's what I say. That's a company that made all kind of bottles and they just went out of business uh in the 1940s you that way i'm telling you there are a bunch of bottles up there i ain't never been oh yeah that these are all well, that's a pretty good find yeah that's I mean, a nice big, bottle. big old bottle yeah I mean, if anybody wants it there well we know that it's good to get out and explore a place and see hey, what you got yeah. and, then, and then you can come back and do some serious digging and have a good time uh -huh. oh yeah that's man. cool now yeah, what, that's what we got nice. that's cool that's old cork bottle that's from the 1800s there that's probably about 1890. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, really. Um, I don't think it's medicine, but it could be some kind of, because it's a nice looking bottle, could have been a, some kind of perfume or something, but that's, that's a pretty bottle there. It's probably about 1890. So that's good. That, that just shows you, and it's got a little design on the bottom. Just shows you can get in here and dig up some nice stuff. It's just uh, wanting to work at it and do it. But you can get in here and find some nice stuff. This is the surface stuff, so that's the last stuff that was dumped. The older stuff's gonna be up under everything. So when you get in a spot like this, dig, get under your surface stuff, and that's when you start finding your old stuff. So, so far in just a matter of minutes, we found a couple of nice little bottles. I mean, if you're a beginner collector or a beginning into the uh, bottle digging, these little bottles like this will make a nice addition to your collection, to your new collection. We just found these laying around on top, so. That's some good black dirt there if you want to grow something in there. I mean, a garden, you know, like tomatoes or something. <laughs> hey, that's about it for the bottle digging. We had a good time. We did find a couple of nice pieces. Right now, we're going to head back to the clubhouse where Walt has prepared us lunch. Uh, we'll eat some ribs and rice. How does that sound? Sound good to me. Well, I want to tell you, this is the part we're going to do some right. cooking now. You got some, uh, you've already cooked some ribs. Got them on. Got them before y'all come. Got some ribs on. Just and put them in water. Ribs Because you know why? My oh, man, oh, Tom, Tom Mann. Man. Yeah. Does him. Tom Mann would leave a huh. U-Fall out of Alabama and drive all over here and just eat uh, ribs and rice or chicken and rice. Everybody he loved them both. Rice, it didn't matter. They got the ribs. Oh, yeah. They're done. Oh, look at there now. That's boiled ribs. Uh-huh. Boiled ribs. They is, and you just lay them down there right there. Yeah. We use this here boiled water for the, the ribs for the rice. rice. Oh, yes, That's sir. the key thing to that rice is your ribs. Oh, yeah. The broth. The broth. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's how tender they are. All, All right. right, Uncle Jesse's around here, so come here, Jesse, and Jesse eat the bone. Now, this is what you do on the rice. You just What's go your like that this. thing of rice you got there? You go like that. That might be enough. You reckon? I think it so. It might be enough. Right here. And then you go a little, little salt. I like pepper. Right, stay to the other side of that pot where the little, little can see that. A little pepper. And guess what? Put the top on. We, Set back. We, we, relax. Now, now I just got to put these on the grill. Okay, on the grill. On the grill. Okay. All right. Well, let's go. Jesse, and I, well, I'll yeah, tell you yeah, who. Yeah, I'm, that yeah, bone yeah, is juicy, Jesse. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh, yeah, right well, away, Jesse did show up with us today. You know, he, can I get a little salt and pepper on this, please? Hold on a minute. Uh, Uncle Jesse. I love him. Here you go. Yeah. I got a little pepper. All right. Mm, mm, mm. You want some, Junior? Hey. You got to have that. Now, on my ribs, I, I don't really do a lot. Let me, uh. Now. Ain't much good to do on there. Oh, you know, How long did you let your ribs boil? Uh, probably uh, till they were done. I, I said an hour. Scoring, and I and I and I, sent, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do them fast. I want them slow. Look how tender. Oh, they I just so tender that. And when you eat them, they're gonna be tender than that. Yeah. I could eat that slab by myself. What y'all gonna eat? <laughs> <laughs> All the ribs, then uh, let them. I, I like to let them cool a little minute, you know, a few minutes, and let them just sit. And then we put them on the grill with the, the, the and then just real slow if you can cook them slow. And they going they gonna be. Uh, uh, I hope they're gonna be good. We're gonna try them. If we can keep strolling that way from them. I'm looking in that direction, but more ain't quite that long. But I, I'm gonna get them. My lips probably reach over there though. The rice is simmering. The ribs are grilling. And this gives us a chance to sit down, relax, and get to know some of Walt's good friends and family. It's not long before the dinner bell is ringing and the blessing is being said. Here's some of that good old rice. Boy, now that looks good. That'll make your little belly swell up right there. That's a little belly right there. Oh, uh, got the... Uh, Zucchini, is that why? Uh, zucchini. Zucchini. I thought it was a zoo, like a zoo. Am I saying it right? What is it? Zucchini. Zucchini. Uh, you got to have greens and all that stuff. Green but There's one of the things we came for right now, Walt. I my back. I believe in reincarnation. Walt really done a good job in these ribs. The only thing about having a beard and all that, they were eating this stuff, he gets all <laughs> in it. But then, that's your flavor saver. It's a flavor saver, they say. But uh, yeah, we we'll give you something for later. After stuffing ourselves like it was Thanksgiving Day, I step out back to have a talk with the new sheriff of Cook County. And I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to arrest Walt. Cause, well. Uh, there's, there's plenty of warts out on him, and today, <laughs> when y'all get through, I may go ahead and take him in. Because that rice is so good, it should be illegal. That's right. I'm going to tell you right now. Walt's Man Cave slash the Southern Bass Busters Clubhouse is more than just a place for the guys to hang out and talk about fishing. It's a place for the whole family to come together, laugh, have fun and just enjoy each other's company. We had a great time today, and although it was mine and Uncle Jesse's first time over here, we don't plan on it being our last.